Let's give a warm hand to Henry Niacarondi. <laughs> Welcome. So I read, and you're probably going to talk about it, but let me ask you a quick, quick question. I read about Rwanda a little, and then I think you said that in one of your, in, in the booklet, it says um, only 18% of the, of the population there has access to electricity. 20. 20. And, and more than 70% has a mobile phone. So is that the, the core inspiration of starting this? Partially, yes. Uh, the rest was, you know, I was trying to have an impact, which I'll talk a little bit about it, but uh, that was the initial idea, the concrete how to idea. solve the... And where did your inspiration in the, in the heart come from? Is there an example of some inspirational figure you have? It's one of those uh, times where you, you, you reflect on, you know, where you've been and where you're trying to go, right. and you ask yourself, what direction are, are you going to take? And that's one, one of those moments. That's what I decided to do here, right? Be the inspiration for the young generation. Thank Good you. luck. All right, thanks. So uh, at ARED, we believe that uh, the antidote of poverty is economic opportunity. Hi, my name is Henry Nyakarundi. I've been an entrepreneur for 15 years. But in 2009, I came to a crossroad in my life. I wanted to use my skill set to truly bring some solution and fight one of the biggest challenges the continent is facing today, is the fight on poverty. Let me give you some facts. By 2050, Africa will have 2 billion people living on the continent. 50% of the people will be living in semi-urban or urban areas. As of today, 400 million people are living in poverty. So we decided to adopt what we call a micro-franchise business model to truly tackle this problem that we call poverty. But what do you need to start a business or a micro-business? First, you need energy. Unfortunately, in East Africa, for example, less than 20% of the people have access to energy. Most small businesses use generators that produce around 150 kilograms of CO2 on a yearly basis. You also need enough products and services to make the business sustainable. Finally, you need access to digital connectivity. Most services now need uh, internet or access to internet. Unfortunately, again, less than 15% of the people in East Africa have access to internet. So we developed an affordable, sustainable, green business in a box we call Shariki Hub to truly empower people at the base of the pyramid. How do we do this? Well, we start with the kiosk, and I'll start from the bottom up. It's a mobile unit, so it's very easy to implement. It has a battery system, so they can work it through the night. They can charge up to 30 phones at one time. We provide Wi-Fi connectivity, uh, whether it's internet or intranet. We also can distribute audio content through our speaker system for those who don't have a smartphone. What we're working on now is IoT technology to better monitor the kiosk and collect some what we call business intelligence. And the whole system is solar power. We produce around 135 kilowatts per kiosk per year. But that was not enough. To make the business sustainable, we needed additional services. So we developed a mobile app where we can uh, distribute services such as airtime, mobile money. In Rwanda, we also do government services. And all this data is collected on our back-end system, on our software system. There's three processes we call for our micro-franchisee. Number one, the recruitment and the training. We have a three-day training program. Second, our monitoring program, make sure they keep up with the work and their performance stays high. Finally, we bring a support system and we do the maintenance on the kiosk. So, so far, we've had 25 kiosks on the ground. 60% of those uh, kiosks are run by women. 5% are run by people with disability. A micro-franchisee today earn around $100, which is double the revenue per capita in Rwanda. Um, we also been able to offset 3.8 tons of CO2 on a yearly basis. We also operate in refugee camps. Yes, refugee camps still need economic opportunity, which is one of the biggest challenges they have. Finally, the last three months, we've been able to do 48,000 transactions, which is the equivalent of what we did the whole year of 2016. 
we have what we call a triple bottom impact. Our social impact with the job creation, our environmental impact, we plan to recycle the component of the kiosk, and our technological impact with affordable connectivity. Our goal is simple, 10 years, 20 countries. We estimate we can have 100,000 solar kiosks in those countries. We'll be able to serve 3 million people on a daily basis. How do we plan to do this? Very simple. We developed what we call a licensing, where we'll be licensing the business model and the technology. And with the Green Challenge, we can truly do this. By 2020, we estimate we can have 5,000 kiosks. We'll be able to offset 750 tons of CO2 on a yearly basis. With our commitment, our passion uh, of our team, you know, including the inclusive business model and technology, I truly believe we can make a difference in fighting poverty. Thank you very much. Thank you, well done. Great presentation and a great kiosk to look forward to. Juries, jury members, Jim, you're going to ask the question. Go ahead. That was a really great presentation, thank you. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about how your company compares against maybe other entrepreneurs that are out there, maybe focusing on mobile phone charging and energy access? What, what, what you think gives you the edge uh, to scale this business up faster? So our technology combines multiple services under one umbrella. So basically what we bring is convenience to the customer. If a customer wants to charge a phone, I don't, I don't know, I mean, for those who may not know, if a customer needs to charge a phone, it needs to go to one location. If he needs to purchase a service, it needs to go to a different location. If he needs to be connected to the internet, it needs to go to a different location. What we've been able to do is combine all the services under one umbrella. And the fact that, you know, if you want to run a business, as I mentioned, in rural area or semi-urban area, without energy, you can't do that. And the fact that the kiosk is solar, that's the edge we have also. Thank you. Okay, we open the floor to you all. Please raise your hand. There's one question. Go ahead. Hi, uh, my name is Elizabeth Bosenbroek, uh, and I'm from the Berlees Gymnasium. How will we make sure that uh, the phones don't get, like, uh, people don't steal the phones? Because if you have to stay with your phones, it takes a while to charge it, and you can't work and can't get the money you need. Uh, great question. Uh, so remember, this is a micro business. So as a micro franchise, they're responsible of their customer. So when a customer come and bring uh, their phone, they give them a small ticket. Um, so it's a sticker they put on the back of the phone and they get a ticket. And the average charging on a customer, depending on location, is between 30 minutes uh, to an hour. So most area we in is high traffic area. One of the busiest place we charge phone is our refugee camps. You know, because we're the only charging spot they use. So, but they're still responsible because this is not a, a, a job or a charity. It's a business for them. And we make sure that they're responsible for that. Thank you. Other questions from you here in the front? We'll get a mic to you. Row three. Here we go. There it is. Go ahead. My name is uh, Chris Westra. I was uh, wondering, in your future plans, you, uh, there are two white islands, uh, Zimbabwe and Swaziland. They're not <laughs> covered by your future plans. Can you give an explanation for that? Um, well, you know, th those countries we selected was countries I visited that we believe where the need is. That doesn't mean that the other countries will not be selected. It requires a certain uh, a key ingredient to make this business successful. You know, so for example, there's, there's countries that are not ready. Connectivity, we work with telecom company, for example, to bring the connectivity from our kiosk. So if, if the network is not that good, it's gonna be challenging. We also need partners uh, to work in those countries. You know, the, the, the challenge in social impact is that the margins are so small. It requires a lot of different ingredients to make it sustainable. And that's what we haven't said. That doesn't mean that we're not going to be there. We just didn't do the research yet. Uh, but our goal is to be as, as many countries as possible. Okay. Here's one more. Go ahead. Hi. My name is Leon Simons. I mainly work in Ethiopia as an entrepreneur. Um, great presentation. Good job. 
Um, can you say a bit about the uh, investment which the entrepreneur has to make and uh, what the return of investment is? Thank you. Yeah, so entre micro entrepreneur makes, uh, I'll talk about Rwanda obviously, but uh, they make a one time investment. For the men, it's 50,000. For the women, well, 50,000 Rwandan franc, so it's around $50. Uh, for the women, it's 25,000, which is around uh, $25. And people with disabilities, around $10. The reason why we broke it down like this is because women and people with disability don't have the same access to funding as the men. But that's a one time. That includes training, transport of the kiosks to the location where they're going to be at, and the maintenance. The goal is not to make money on the kiosks, but on the services we provide from the kiosks. Great, thanks. I'm very flexible in time-wise. No, yeah. the, the other two <laughs> got oh, the question in the red, so no worries. But thanks a lot for... Uh, doing this presentation Thank and you. answering all these questions. Good luck with your plan. Thank you. Henry, Naya Columbia.